Chapter 11, The Final Chapter He had done what he set out to do, he mused. And in a much more flashy display of grandeur than even you scaling rooftops. Ema had been returned to the family. Apparently she had also been trapped inside that terrifying obi. Held somewhere in the cold, dark underground. A demon's hidden lair. After a long and tearful reunion, she informed you that a man named Tangan had freed her, as well as a few other innocent hostages. That was how you found out the news. There were survivals of the battle. One of them with golden hair. Flowers spanned as far as the eye could see, framing the mansion in an almost otherworldly beauty. Singing birds took to the skies from behind a tall fence, where the top of a large cherry blossom tree was visible. Doves, crows, a tiny sparrow. The butterfly estate, they called it. And apparently it was a hub where warriors came to rest, train, and recover. As you approached the large front gate, you had to wonder if they'd even answer the door. The grounds were so vast you doubted anyone would even hear you knock. Nevertheless, you reached out and rapped firmly on the wood with your fist. A breath or two passed before you heard shuffling on the other side of the door. One soft creak later, and you were face to face with a lovely girl who wore her ponytail to one side, eyes almost perfectly matching the color of the lavenders growing out front. She donned a pleasant enough expression, but it was one you couldn't seem to get a clear read on. Perhaps Zenko had spoiled you with her vivacious and predictable demeanor. Uh, oops, you meant Zenitsu. A moment of silence passed between you and the girl. In your past experience, the host would have traditionally been the one to greet you, but maybe it was wrong to assume you'd be welcome here. Uh, hello. You forced a smile and bowed politely. I'm from the Kyogoku house. I've come here to extend my gratitude to the demon slayers that saved me. She still didn't speak, but maintained that same dreamy smile for a spell, before turning on her heels and walking back the way she came. Your mouth fell open in confusion. Did I say something wrong? You blinked once or twice before noticing she left the door open. Am I supposed to follow her? You took a cautious step across the frame. And when she glanced back at you expectantly, you took quick strides to catch up with her. Uh, thank you. She responded only with a half nod. But apparently that was the best communication you could hope to receive from her. Through a long hallway adjacent to a beautiful courtyard, she guided you. And it was in this wordless span of time that the consequence of the situation began to set in for you. Zenitsu was a man. You were about to call upon an injured man. Alone. With no permission from the head of your household. Then again, the interim manager had been missing since the incident. Technically, that meant there was no one in charge of you at the present time. Right? Still, you had to wonder what kind of message your unannounced visit would send. Would he find it inappropriate? You wouldn't get the chance to ponder the conundrum further, for a familiar face caught your attention. A young man in off-white garb and a smattering of bandages rounded the corner, greeting the girl leading you with a pleasant smile. It took a few seconds to deduce where you knew him from, and for an instant you thought you must have met him at a tea house or something. But then that scar on his forehead was unmistakable. He must have had a similar moment of realization for he did a double-take as he passed you, before swinging around and stopping dead in his tracks. His eyes grew wide when you turned around, as if he'd just been caught doing something terrible, and you couldn't fight back a grin. Ah, it's nice to see you again, Sumiko. You sassed, and his cheeks turned a light pink, but he still cracked a smile in spite of his embarrassment. Sorry about all that. I never wanted to deceive you or anybody else. But it was necessary to find the demon. He cast a glance backwards towards what you presumed to be the hospital wing. It's all thanks to Zenitsu that we found it. 
Zenitsu. You tested his true name on your lips for the second time. It felt so natural despite its novelty, yet it tiptoed off your tongue quietly, as if it were taboo to speak it here and now. My real name is Tanjiro, he continued, and I'm so glad to see you're all right. He reached out, and you accepted his handshake. You noticed his hands felt calloused, just as Zenitsu's had when you first met him. An obvious tell of a swordsman in hindsight. It's an honor to meet you, Tanjiro, and thank you for your service. You withdrew to bow respectfully, and he waved his hands in surprise. Uh, you don't have to do that. But I do. You all risked your lives to fight that demon. And you managed to save me and all the other girls in the Okia. It's such a relief to hear that. The softness in his eyes told you his concerns were genuine. And you couldn't believe how inaccurate your first impressions of him had been. It almost made you want to laugh. Are you here to see Zenitsu? The frankness of the question flustered you a bit. Oh, um, yes, I... He'll be so happy to see you. He exclaimed brightly, gesturing his hand back towards the way he came. Come on, I'll show you to... I can't take that! It makes me too sleepy! And I don't want to go to sleep! Well, you no longer needed guidance, apparently. Zenitsu's voice, or rather his scream would lead you right to him. A small assembly of courtyard birds took flight at the intensity of it, and Tanjiro hastily followed you to the doorway of the infirmary. You need your rest! A girl in pigtails stood between you and the blonde, pointing an accusatory finger at him. Do you know how much stress your body just went through? You're lucky to be alive! No! Don't make me get the funnel again! A garbled, inhuman noise came out of his mouth, causing the girl to pinch the bridge of her nose in exhaustion. Finally, she let out an indignant grunt and stormed off. And now was the very first time you'd laid eyes on his true form. There was no makeup caking his skin, no haphazardly tied ribbons in his hair, and he bore a square bandage on his right cheek. You smiled warmly at the sight, but hesitated in the doorway. Settle down, Zenitsu. There's someone here to see you. Huh? The blonde's hysteria ebbed, and his eyes followed Tanjiro until they settled upon you. What? <laughs> Against his better judgment, the injured demon slayer leapt out of his bed towards you, only for his bandaged legs to give out instantaneously, sending him sliding face first across the polished wood. Zenitsu? You rushed to his aid offering your arms to help him up. But instead of using them as leverage to rise, as you'd anticipated, he latched onto you in an embrace right there in the middle of the floor, burying his face into your chest. <laughs> Travershot, I was so afraid! He blubbered. I missed you so much! I was worried you didn't make it! All you could do was balk in bewilderment as his weight brought you down to your knees. I'm all right, Zenitsu. I didn't sleep last night because right when the fight started, I passed out and woke up with both of my legs broken. So now I'm afraid to fall asleep. What if it happens again? You blinked rapidly a few times before finding the ability to speak. Oh, so all that crying wasn't a part of the girl act? No, that's just the way he is. Tanjiro replied, clearly pained by his comrade's shameless display. A little distressed dent formed between his eyebrows, as if he was expecting you to take off in a similar manner as the last girl. But to his surprise, you started laughing. <laughs> it's all as well, I suppose. The man I lived with was the one I fell in love with, after all. His breath stilled at your divulgence, and his body froze in your arms. You love me? There was so much doubt in his voice despite how much you'd been through together, and he pulled back just enough to look at you. 
He had mumbled it barely above a whisper, as if he didn't dare to believe it was true. Even though I lied to you and cry a lot and left blonde hair in your brush? Big round teary eyes gawked at you, like an owl, and you chuckled at him. <laughs> of course. That was all necessary to complete your mission. I don't begrudge you any of it. His face positively sparkled at that. Rosy cheeks and gaze so adoring, it almost made you turn bashful yourself. Tanjiro covered his ears for the impending, rapturous scream. But Zenitsu's incandescence suddenly fell. Wait, but... your dream? Your home got destroyed in the fire. What are you going to do? Well, I'm not so sure exactly. You chewed your lip pensively, and he sat back on his knees to give you space, keeping only your hands intertwined. Tanjiro didn't know what was going on. The major threat to the girls is gone, so I'm not sure what use I'll be to them. The Oiron was the one I was most worried about, and you all took care of her. Perhaps after they rebuild, they'd let me work a day job there until my debts are paid. I don't like that. Zenitsu frowned cutely, hands tightening possessively around yours. Not in the same work style, of course. You smiled. Maybe they'd accept me as an assistant manager. After all, committed women aren't permitted to work as Kaisei. What? Tanjiro let out a sound of complete shock. Wait, seriously? C committed The blonde gaped at you. You'd still be my wife? It was here, trapped in his doe-eyed stare, that you began to turn shy. If the offer is still on the table and wasn't just a part of the act... You were actually panicking now. That possibility hadn't even crossed your mind until this instant. Was it? If it was Zenitsu asking, I'm sure it wasn't an act. Tanjiro deadpanned with a smile. What? Yes! Marry me, marry me, marry me! Zenitsu launched himself forward, smushing himself against you once more. You giggled and returned the violent embrace, feeling his arms tighten around your waist. I thought you'd never ask. The end. This is the actual ending. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. So I know the whole moving mural thing wasn't canon at all, but I really wanted to add some arcane element of mystery to Daki's power to heighten the suspense. Because she said she killed a bunch of Hashira, so you're telling me not a single one of those specially skilled slayers had a spidey sense like all three of the Kamaboko trio has? In the manga, Zenitsu knew immediately when she was nearby, but I thought it'd be cooler if she had like a cloaking aspect so that they could live under one roof for a while and be wary but not certain of the other's identity. So I ran with that and I hope you liked it. Every time she feeds on a resident or like adds them to her food stores, her OB sigil grows longer and her blood demon art gets stronger. And that's why Zenitsu counted the rooms wrong. After Ima was taken, the Obi grew and that's what caused him to walk in on the triplets. When I mentioned this idea to my husband so many years ago when it was in its embryonic stages, he suggested that the reader falls for him, thinks she's a lesbian, then cucks him at the end for another girl in the brothel when he reveals he's a boy. I didn't go that route, but would that not have been hilarious? Anyway, I hope you had a good time. I had so much fun writing this mini series. So thank you for watching and leave your comments below and let me know what you thought of it. So. Bye.